This is the new Canon R8. Their new offering in their RF mounted lineup of mirrorless cameras. You get a 24 megapixel sensor. It does 4K 60 oversampled from 6K. It does 180 frames per second, but it does it in full HD. And we're gonna be testing it out today in the harsh, cold Canadian wilderness. Who's this for? What's packed inside? Why did they make it? How much does it cost? Can it keep up? Oh, I can feel it on my feet. It's coming. Only do this if you have the proper equipment. So today we are making a video on the new Canon EOS R8. This is the replacement to the EOS R. I'm freezing, standing in the middle of a river in February. It's icy cold, all for that sweet, sweet shot. And today we're certainly paying for it. Yeah, that current is stronger than I thought. Yeah, no, no, you don't want to mess around with this. This is dangerous. You'd never want to get in this right now. Yeah, I don't know where my foot is. It's comfy. One of the things I look for and have been looking for recently when shooting is movement and motion in photos. It's not fishing season, so you're not actually legally allowed to do that. So we're just making it look like it, pretending to fly fish. So I was with Trust in Timber here on January 1st. And if you recall the photo on the train tracks, just a half step making it look like it was walking away, holding some items. It gives you that visual interest that you don't get when you're just standing in a scene and it's look directly into the camera or look left or look right. They can still make for great photos and I do plenty of them, but by just introducing a little bit of motion, that's what we're going to test out with this new Canon EOS R8 today. Try not to freeze since it's very cold. We're wearing waders, but I do feel it. Oh, I feel it. I've, yeah, it's, it's cold, especially the hands. All right, fire up a couple test shots to see how that looks. I'm going to underexpose him so that the background isn't super blown out. I almost think too if we switch spots, this direction looks better with the bridge. Yeah, this is cool. Snap, snap, boom. Oh, I like that, how you stood up and looked out for a second. That looked pretty cool. Well, you're, yeah, that's a good look. I like that, keep going. I'm just snapping a ton right now. One of my fingers are freezing. Okay, time for a lens switch now. Kirk, is there any way you can bring me a 50 over here? This is probably not the smartest place to keep camera equipment on ice that's been breaking all day. This better get at least 30,000 likes. I'm <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> at least 50. Oh, that was some Indiana Jones right there. Whoosh. What's up, Harrison Ford? A couple of those for the vid and let's get out of here. Are your feet cold? I can't even feel mine. A few things I want to talk about. Who's this camera for? What's it replacing? Why would you buy it? But I'd like to do that not in a river. That's just, um... you want to grab this for me? <laughs> Woo. A couple things I've noticed, been using this camera for a few hours out here today. One, the battery is very small. Same battery as the Canon RP. It's not your typical LPE6 battery that the EOS R had, the R5, the R6. It lasts quite a bit less. Now when you're out here filming in the cold, I presume that probably makes it last even less time than normal. Another little nitpicky thing that I don't like too much is the screen rotation where it articulates is in the exact same spot as the microphone jack. So it's constantly getting in the way. So the first impressions with this R8 is it is way smaller. The body itself is thinner than any other Canon R body that I've seen. I mean, it is dramatically thin. We'll show it in studio here and even thinner than an R5. Part of the reason the battery is probably not the LPE6 is to bring that footprint down. I believe it's also their lightest RF mount camera to date.
I find every time Canon release a new R series camera, they flip around where the dials are. You get used to the on off button being on the left side, but now that's the swap between a video and photo. But in literally like a half day shooting, you get used to it right away. So the continuous shooting frames per second on this is going to come in at 6 frames per second mechanical shutter and 40 frames per second with the electronic shutter. Now when we were in the river I was only using the mechanical, so 6 frames per second and I still got exactly what I needed. Now if you were shooting sports, uh, this probably isn't what I would choose. I would want to go with something like the R3, but then again for entry level costs, getting 6 mechanical and 40 electronic is still great. One thing I don't like is there's no sensor door, there's no cover on this. So when you're switching on something like this and that sensor is wide open looking you right back, you want to get it done as soon as possible. So it's not a deal breaker, but it definitely stresses me out more than I need to be. Let me just check my notes. I actually planned this whole video out, which helped dramatically. It'll also help in the edit, but that's, that's nor here nor there because the notes I really need are currently on my phone. <laughs> Now, a few times when we were shooting with this, I noticed the focus seemed a bit off. Uh, note this clip right here. I had it on face tracking, but it seemed to want to focus on my hood. It was just that off section right there that was crispy and clear, not my eyes. So I don't know if that was just like a one-time issue. It didn't happen every single time, but I thought it was enough to mention. Because this is a pre-production camera, I have to use this Canon software to convert all my RAWs to TIFF files and then edit those in Lightroom. So keep that in mind. It, it can't be much different. Now, if we zoom in on the shot here, looking at at Trust and Timber casting this line. It looks pretty good. It's pretty sharp. Now I did use a 50 millimeter 1.2, so that's gonna help with the sharpness. That added a bit of chromatic aberration. That's the lens. It's not R5 sharp. It's not R3 sharp. It's R8 sharp. And in many instances, looking at the full picture, it looks great. You wouldn't look at this and think, wow, that's soft focus. But when you do zoom in, you notice things. So the R8 is coming in at $14.99 US dollars, which is $19.99 Canadian. So who's this for? I think it's aimed towards beginners, probably that are wanting to take the craft more seriously because you can still get great results with a camera like this and it's packed full of features that will be useful if you want to do both photo and video. Now this doesn't have IBIS built into it, so there was no warp or wobble while I was vlogging and I prefer that because the IBIS that Canon has right now is not good in my opinion, so that was actually a benefit for me with the R8. So where this wouldn't be my primary camera, I would definitely keep it in my bag as a backup because should anything ever happen to my main body, this would do the job and get me through the day just fine. I don't really want to review cameras anymore because they're all awesome. Like literally you can't buy camera in 2023. So just like whatever you can afford, buy the best that you can afford and that's probably going to be good enough if you have it with you and you actually try to learn it inside and out and learn technique versus, you know, What's better? What's going to make me better? Nothing's going to make you better. It doesn't matter what it is. Nothing will make you better unless you're out in the world using your I always just tell people that the best camera is the one that you can afford to replace. Why is that? <laughs> if you're afraid to break a camera and it's in a Pelican case in your canoe, you're going to miss all the great shots. That actually makes sense for so many reasons too. Because you might be able to afford a really nice camera, but can you, can you afford two of them? <laughs>